video I'm going to show you how I worked a little painting with some collage, this painting here. It was it's a pretty little painting but it wasn't very impactful and I wanted to do something fun and different and experiment with it. So um, obviously it speeded up a bit because it actually took me um, oh over two days, maybe even three, to actually finish the painting. So to do it all in, I don't know, just under 20 minutes. <laughs> We'd be here till next Christmas if we did it in real time. So I'm just going to kind of go through with you um, the process and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I've made collage paper from tissue paper. And, um, you know, you'll see as we go, as I'm using my paints, if I don't want the paint on the brush anymore, I'll brush it onto... Um, tissue paper. I keep a stack that I've cut up and then I um, use the, the leftover paint and make just anything on tissue paper patterns or you know just take the paint off and I find them really useful and you can see I'm using them here. I'm using some um, Liquitex uh, gel medium uh, satin but you could use um, any kind of uh, gel medium or mod, mod podge, um, you know, whatever you have at hand. Just when you're actually applying it, when you're putting it on, um, go from the centre outwards and in that way you get rid of um, some of the wrinkles. You can see on this bottom one, I have got some wrinkles in that. That was actually, actually an old um, collage that I did on some tracing paper and it's thicker. But actually, I've kept most of the um, wrinkles in because it's nice for texture. So, you know, I've cut out quite a lot of bits. I've got lots of different collage pieces, so a few to, to choose from. Um, and, you know, you can just tear them up and rip them and then, you know, see where you want to place them. By using collage in this way, it frees you up. You know, if I was to paint straight into this paint, into this painting, um, you know, you, uh, it's quite inhibiting because you've got, got this sort of strange feeling that you might mess it up. <laughs> but somehow with collage, it doesn't feel the same way somehow. Don't ask me why, because I don't know, but it just, you can attack it in a different way. So, you know, I've got the collage down mainly. Um, then I've got some big pieces here and um, to sort of give some really good um, focal points at the moment and to, and to add some contrast. But you know, they don't, it won't necessarily stay. I'm just playing and this is the whole point really of the exercise is to experiment and play. Just continuously ask yourself, what if? What if I put this here? What if I put that there? And see what happens. And, you know, when we're being creative in this way, you know, we want to sort of stay in that creative zone, in the, le in, in the right side of our brain. The left side of the brain can start interfering on an intellectual basis. And, you know, I've got to make it look nice and it's got to be this and it's got to be that. Well, it doesn't. It will naturally unfold if you just allow it. It's a strange thing. Something inside you can take over that real deep-seated creativeness that we all have, that we all experienced as children, where we just played and had fun and enjoyed it. And it really, you know, wasn't until, you know, maybe we're four or five years old that, you know, we'd drawn a horse and somebody looked at it and said, oh, it doesn't look like a horse, it looks more like a dog, and, you know, started to criticise what we'd done, that we inhibit that natural creativity. So the purpose of doing these play paintings is to re-access that creativeness inside us and try and not get into the mode of thinking that it has to be or it should be or it must be something. <laughs> really, the only thing it must be is fun. <laughs> And enjoying the process of, you know, seeing what we can do with the paint, seeing what we can do with the collage, 
seeing what we can do with different tools. You can see here I'm using a palette knife. I've got my silicon sponge. Obviously, I've got my brushes. I've got sponges, all kinds of things that you can use to get different textures and um, different um, kinds of covering of, of the paint. You know, I love using a palette knife or, you know, even a big scraper tool is fantastic. And the purpose of this is to experiment, which is what I, I did exactly. And then I decided I would just glaze over it and continue playing. So I've covered it in a little bit of yellow ochre and some uh, ochre mis mixed with white and just drawing on top. So you might think, oh, I've wasted all that time. But no, I haven't at all. I've really enjoyed seeing what will happen. Um, seeing what will happen if and where does the painting want to take me? Well, I don't want to just make a pretty little painting. I want to put my heart and soul into um, my painting. I want to find something out about myself. And I feel that this is really important for you uh, when you're painting yourself you know, to find your way, your own unique way, not copying something from outside, but bringing something from inside out. So you explore your own, um, your own experience and your own sensation of, of painting. You know, none of us are the same. We're all individuals. <laughs> so we all have our own way of, of doing things. You know, you might look at another painting which really inspires you and you might use that as a lead in just to get you started and then let go and do your own thing and see where it takes you. You know, having been teaching for very many years, I have many students come and say, oh, you know, they can't do it. They can't paint like X, Y and Z and they'd love to do this and they'd love to do that. What they're ignoring there is their own unique creativity. But, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit scary because we haven't been in that space for such a long time. And the last time we were in that space, we got criticized for it as a child. So, you know, it's not really so much about learning about the skills of painting. It's learning how to let go, how to allow yourself to Create. Now you can see here I'm making some collage paper with the leftover paint and um, again that's a lovely way to free up because <laughs> you're seriously not thinking about it when you're just rubbing paint on a piece of tissue paper. So you can see now that it's developing in a whole new different way, different colours, uh, different structure and I'm beginning now to um, slowly look at how balanced the painting is. I'm still staying creative, but I'm feeling into where, um, you know, I want you to look <laughs> as a viewer to the painting. You know, I want some interesting areas and I want some uh, quiet areas so your, your eye can go around the painting. And then I'm looking at a few different textures and a few different color values. And again, you know, you feel into it, you know, you want, you want some softer colours and you want some stronger colours, stronger values, and you want strong against light <laughs> so you can really see it and it pops out. So again, here, look, I'm looking, I'm, I'm using a, a scraper just to um, give the paint some texture. And then using a lighter tone on top of the darker tone, but leaving some of the darker tones behind, you can see that it's sort of slowly, <laughs> um, you know, coming to life. But it's very much, you know, going with the flow and feeling your way. You know, let the painting tell you. And, you know, really keep in that creative space in your mind of, allowing yourself to experiment, to explore possibilities, you know, be curious. Um, and here, more, more collage paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I can use those again to do exactly the same thing that I've done on this painting is put some collage down and then go with the flow and see where it goes. So I hope you're finding this helpful um, and it's really worth experimenting yourself on your own painting. Take a painting that you don't like very much, do a bit of collage on top of it and notice how you'll just go off into a zone. It's wonderful. <laughs> And that's the beauty of painting, you know, and particularly abstract painting. You can just lose yourself and feel ah, oh, just at one with yourself, with your creativity, with your, you know, mind, body and spirit. <laughs> it's totally absorbing and it's a wonderful process. And there's no right or wrong, you know, particularly, you know, in abstract painting. Uh, anything goes you you can really do anything that you want that you know wh wherever that creativity takes you you know you might just put dots of paint on the paper and see where that takes you you might add lots of water to it and see where that takes you just sort of go with your own um feeling natural feeling that you get without thinking about it too much it's only later once we've got all that down that you might just do some tweaks for the composition and you'll see that as we go as we're progressing with this um with this little painting to give it a few extra little pops of interest with um some brighter colour and some complementary colour. And it, you can see I'm turning it round. It doesn't have to be a specific way round. It might just find its way there, but you don't have to be thinking or restricted to have it in just one way. I'm always turning my um, paintings round to see, you know, how they look the other way round. And sometimes they land up the other way round because, you know, I hadn't... I hadn't, you know, deliberately done it in that way, but something comes up that way that is fantastic and I love it. So really there's no restrictions and you just, the only restriction, but it's not a restriction, is to set, is to stay loose and creative and experimenting, staying open to possibilities I think that's actually quite a nice way of describing it. Stay open to yourself, to your own intuition and to your own feeling of where where does that want to go? Ask it. And, you know, it's a little bit like putting a Google search. And if you ask, you'll get the question. <laughs> You're sorry, you'll get the answer. But if you if you don't ask the question you won't have the answer. So ask, where does this colour want to go? What colour does that want to be? How does that feel to me? Does there feel to be a balance in it? Where's my eye looking? Am I intrigued with where this is going? You know, is it predictable or is it spontaneous and interesting? You know, those are the sorts of questions that you can be asking yourself there I'm just, take, again, using the tissue paper to take off some of the surface paint. And again, nice, you know, lovely to use for collage. Um, and it also saves you wasting an awful lot of paint, <laughs> which is a great thing. So, um, you know, as this now is is taking a whole different shape, you know, you can't, see the colours of the collage particularly they are there underneath and some of it you can't really see it um, on on camera but you've got a depth there because of the layers so it feels as if there's some kind of history you, you can feel that there's something else going on underneath which is um, interesting to be looking when you're looking at a painting so now again, just doing a few extra um, details, different tone again, using the same colours because it's a limited palette of this yellow ochre and teal, a light teal and dark teal. And I've got a little bit of red and um, a little bit of yellow. 
and obviously black and white. And when you when you obviously mix the white with the colours, you're going to get obviously lighter tints. And if you mix black with the colours, you're going to get different tones. So you can experiment, you know, as you go with that to see. And to get the harmony in the picture, you add some of the colours in together, which hold the colour together. So I don't actually use black on its own. I mix it with the teal and the okra um, and some of the red to get a warmth to the black. Um, and that makes it um, hold together. Here I'm just using a card to make some lines. And again, you know, use what you've got around. Um, and I use obviously, you know, different things to get different effects. I love using um, corks to get circles, <laughs> putting the cork in the paint and then printing it onto the picture. And uh, you get some really um, nice circles doing that. Not even, but they're, you know, they're interesting. So uh, making progress, here we are, <laughs> nearly there. Um, just really, I'm, fill, I'm I'm doing something here in the centre to add a little bit more interest and um, a few different tones, some darker tones, some lighter tones, and then it can be blended in. And I blend it in either with the side of the brush or with a sponge. Um, and you can see some of the textures even here. You can see some of the textures of the painting. And um, you, it's just kind of flowing together now. It's so much more of a painting than what I started off with. It feels as if there's more depth to it and more interest. Uh, it starts to become quite fascinating. <laughs> and that's the lovely thing. It's always a surprise. You never really know what's going to happen because you're in that creative zone. And, you know, again, that's another wonderful thing about abstract painting is that it's full of wonderful surprises. <laughs> so I've put some light, I've put some white on here and sometimes if it's dark underneath and you want to do a different colour you can put white on first and then put the colour on the top. I think I'm going to go over this in um, a little bit of okra in a minute. Um, I'm just again adding a bit of texture there to the black. Yeah, here's some of the okra going on top, which is um, blending um, with the paint, going over it again a little bit in white, and then I shall blend it again so it hangs together. And I'm looking at some soft lines and some hard lines, some really thick um strong tones against some soft tones so there's some nice contrast and that will develop as you go the more you practice something like this the more it will happen so you can see I've put some darker tones in there to for the eye to catch those darker tones and then I think I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, red in here uh, mix with some okra. Again, it just strengthens a few areas for the eye to um, flow and that that a nice deep contrast of the tones is, you know, brings a painting alive. So here we are and you can see I added, looked like a figure there to me, so I added another one in just to balance it all up. You can see all the textures here and you know a lot of the color underneath so um, it really gives the painting something uh, dynamic and if you're interested in learning more about abstract painting I've got many different courses in the information below and a free mini course which you can have so have a look there but thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this a video do like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you would like to ask any questions that would be great thanks again bye for now